This is important, members, because what we are doing in this legislation is putting together uh, a block grant program, a block grant program for us to uh, transition and move our workforce training and job training programs uh, over to a new block grant competitive bid process within the Department of Economic Development. Uh, members, this is in direct response to something the Legislative Auditor brought forward last year in February. And I want to note on, uh, it's actually the second page of your handout, there's several bulleted uh, points. This is, this, is, this is key, members. The legislature should not mandate grant recipients in law, but instead allow the selection of recipients through a competitive process administered by deed. And that fourth bullet, deed should more consistently monitor recipients of legislative appropriations and develop an equitable way of funding its monitoring activities. Members, if you go to uh, what's labeled page three in that same handout, you will see that we have 29 different, 29 separate workforce development and job training programs. Uh, some of them funded at a $100,000 level, some of them funded in the past at a million dollars. 29 separate programs. Members, our, our discussion in committee and the Legislative Auditor's Report has shown a light on this and uh, allowed us to conclude that we need to do this differently. Members, I would contend that this is kind of our version of earmarking. This is the way that the legislature can make specific line item appropriations, bypassing deed, frankly bypassing any kind of review. Uh, you will know some of these programs and, and you will like some of these programs. Our contention is that uh, the programs that are doing good work, that are doing good job training, that are doing good workforce development, they are going to win. They're going to win under this new competitive bid process. I look at it as a real job killer bill. And um, it, it kills jobs one cut at a time. Um, we're ending exports by eliminating the trade office. We're jeopardizing job placement and enforcement too. We're complicating a process that could lead to um, unbelievable bureaucracy. Uh, we'll be missing money by forfeiting federal funds. We'll be putting families on the street. And one of the most outrageous things is raiding funds at the IRRB, the Doug Johnson Fund. To take $45 million out of the Doug Johnson Fund is unbelievable that it's even in this bill. The, the, the Doug Johnson Fund and the taconite tax is a production tax that is paid in lieu of property taxes on the Iron Range, and it's a tax on the mining companies. And these funds were meant to be spent in northern Minnesota where they're collected, just like the property taxes in Edina or in Minnetonka or anywhere else in the state. Um, Jesse James would be very proud of you at this time, Senator Michelle, because the rate on this fund is, is something that I, 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 I can't ignore. You know, when ore is mined on the Iron Range, it's taxed once. It can only be taxed every one time, and after it's gone, it can't be taxed again. And so when all the ore is gone, there won't be any taxes being paid to anybody on the Iron Range. And that puts us at a very big disadvantage for the future and for what happens when our kids and our grandkids are in need of a fund like this. Now, you have taken the Doug Johnson Fund, $45 million, saying you're going to pay it back, but everybody knows that we can't bind another legislature to pay back the money. And so the loan provision in the, in the bill is only a hope and a prayer. But the fact of the matter is that the Doug Johnson Fund is, makes up more than 70% of the cut in this bill, and the Iron Range has only about 3% of the population. 